What are you expecting out of OPEC Plus uh, t later on today? Yeah, good morning. Um, I think they'll play it rather cautiously. Um, there are a range of estimates out there, um, ranging from an incremental half a million barrel a day up to a million barrel a day or so from August onwards. Uh, we put it at the bottom end of that range, if not somewhat slightly below. There are some genuine uncertainties uh, that OPEC will need to navigate over the next 18 months. Um, the precise trajectory of the demand recovery, when Iranian exports will increase again, uh, what shale will exactly do. And, and for, for, for those reasons, uh, I think justifiably, they would take a rather cautious approach. But there's one additional thing, is that historically, if OPEC took a cautious approach and withheld some barrels, all prices would go up. All prices would go up, and then non-OPEC suppliers would start to increase investment, develop more fields, and then later on, OPEC could expect to lose some market share. And on this occasion, that doesn't seem to be happening. There is almost no non-OPEC investment response to these high oil prices. So OPEC is also in a somewhat more of a sort of comfortable position, perhaps, to keep oil prices um, elevated without necessarily having to fear this historic sort of threat of, of then losing market share eventually. So that makes it a little easier for them to play, uh, to play it cautiously. That's a really excellent and, and crucial point that historically we did see private companies dive in, chase the oil price higher by expanding investment. But this time around doesn't seem to be the case with that uh, increasing pressure from shareholders to go more ESG friendly. I mean, how specifically is that going to change the dynamic within OPEC and, and the calculus that those energy leaders are likely making at this point? Yeah, um, uh, this is an excellent question. Look, I mean, we're all you know outside observers trying to look in. So precisely what's going on sort of behind the scenes is hard to know. But um, it is worth keeping in mind um, that um, um, that capital expenditure in the oil industry has now reached exceptionally low levels. And perhaps to illustrate this uh, a bit, um, um, I can highlight sort of a few numbers. 2014, oil company capex close to $900 billion. That fell to $550 billion by 2019. But then in 2020, it fell another 30% to about $350 billion. Now, that $350 billion figure is actually quite intriguing because if you read the recent research from the IEA and what how they think a net zero scenario would look like, a scenario where the world tackles climate change and, and reduces carbon emissions to net zero by 2050, that is still a world where there is some investment required in oil and gas fields for the next decade. And they put that number at $350 billion. So the aggregate level of capital expenditure of the industry in, 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 in this perspective is already in line with that net zero scenario. Now that net zero scenario is also a scenario in which oil and gas demand starts to fall very fast. Um, and we're seeing the opposite at the moment. Oil and gas demand is turning out to be very resilient. So there is a, there's a lot of friction in that, in the sense that CapEx is effectively already aligned with Paris. Demand is not. And OPEC, in, I, I would strongly suspect, are looking at this, this, this dynamic. And they can realistically expect that over the next five, 10 years, market share will naturally come their way with these CapEx numbers. And therefore, they can already factor that into their calculations today. And I, I suspect they, they, they will be doing that.